So we, we were hearing news, we were getting reports of uh, everybody fleeing Myanmar. Um, and I knew that, you know, we had we should we should go there and do some original reporting. Um, the team had totally agreed. They were planning trips anyway to you know to get the, really the human rights research. Um, so we we took we went straight to the camps and I was gonna do an initial sort of like uh, a trip, a shooting trip to, to create a short film. Um, so we land up, by, that, by this time it was like early September, people were still trickling in. So the first day, you know, like we go down there, take, I mean, to get to the, the real, you get to get Cox's Bazaar and to, to get this an island called uh, Shapuri Deep. That, that island, which is right at, on the Naf River where most of the Rohingya were coming, you know, you have to take, I'm sure like, Every journalist has done it, done it was, was covered. It's like you take the car, you drive down, then you have to get get off. Like we left at 5.30 in the morning, you know, and uh, then, you know, you have to walk yeah. for a large stretch, and then you take a boat, then you take a tuk-tuk, and then you keep going down further, further, further until you get to this point. And uh, sure enough, we get there, and we're on a pier, and in the distance, just you could see, like, it was just tiny, a string of people were walking by. There's about 50 or 60. And um, it was just, it was, it was crazy. Like we, we saw them walking over. Then by the time they got closer to the shore, uh, we went and walked with them. And um, that was, it was a very emotional um, day of filming. Interviewed a few, three or four of the freshly arrived refugees. And, and also, like, t- talk a bit about this, because, you know, I mean, if you look at the images for people who are just listening and can't see, I mean, people are just carrying with all their belongings just yeah. on their, on, in a one bag oh, and, on their head. Yeah, that's it. Right? Kids, kids who are walking there alone. They, I mean, that's it, with just nothing, with, like, a, a plastic box on their head. Some, some with, like, just, you know, uh, basically a stick with two plastic bags. You know, the morning we walked there, there was um, a makeshift sort of like a, um, it was like a, no, I would, it, it was like a floating vessel um, that was that was used that morning. And I mean, it's just it's just insane because they they just took some bottles, they just built it themselves. You could see it. This is tarpaulin sheet, and they floated over across the river like any way they could. They came over, you know, walking with a without food, I mean, it's just, it's absurd. Um, so, yeah, they're really like walking with nothing. Um, they still really wanted to talk to us, which I found also really interesting, um, that they were, like when, you know, imagine they, they survived this huge journey, and when they saw somebody with a camera, like they they felt the need to, to explain what they were, what they were escaping. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are, you know, especially like the sort of the genocide deniers and everybody, they're, they're saying, oh, you know, well, they've been trained to say a certain story. When you actually hear them talk after they've gone through this, there is no way you can deny it, that, that kind of, like, it, it, it's not scripted because you feel that emotion. You see, you see, you, you sense when somebody's is telling you the truth. And I think that's a lot of, I think visual journalists are very well placed to do that because we've, we've interviewed, you know, we, we do that for a living. We talk to a lot of people, we film them, we, we sent, we had a sense. It's sort of like, like, and it's, it's helped me in, in, in a lot of shoots. It's like this understanding, of an emotional reality. You know, when you're, you're prying too much or you're asking the, like, too invasive questions and you get a sense of how to manage an interview or how, you know, what kind. And like, especially with them, like I felt there was that, like that was the need for, for people to document it visually is just so that they get a sense of the tone of how they were feeling when they said it, that otherwise would be missed if it was a text story or even a still photo, you know, like, like the, the still photo, it's excellent at capturing emotion too, but there's something very, you know, bare bones when you're actually hearing and seeing 
And that's where the language of like motion picture I think, is, is essential for human rights documentation. Because like it, it, nothing compares to it, in my opinion. Um, we were like, yeah, so we, we filmed there for four, uh, for five days. I was going in, we, after that initial trip seeing them walk in, we kind of documented how people were adapting to life in the camps, which was that, and that was the, that's when I really felt like just how the, the scale of the crisis, because, you know, having seen it empty in 2008, I'm like, yo, this is completely this is a different thing altogether. It's changed the entire landscape. That entire region, um, like Ukiah district, is forever changed because it's just imagine, like, yeah, the, sure. one of the world's largest refugee camps. 